Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you watched Google's I.O. this month, you should be excited about a lot of features coming to Android and Google Apps. But what really caught my attention is the new additions coming to Material U, which resulted in a complete overhaul for the wallpaper and style app on Google Pixel phones. So this is AMAD and let's take a closer look at the new styling and Material U features coming with Android 14. I will start with the wallpaper and the style app interface specifically in adjusting the lock screen. I'm not sure about you, but I really like the new design for one reason. It has one page for all the changes you can make without the need to go in and out of different menus. For example, the clock designs are already showing and you can change it with a simple swipe. Then a color picker showing you some of the options you can pick from at the first glance without the need to go into a different menu. Another quick shortcut to pick one of the most recent wallpapers and finally modifying the lock screen shortcuts. When you compare this to Apple's and Samsung implementation, you will find that everything is hidden and you need to tap on every element on your lock screen to know what you can do. So I think Google's approach is much easier to digest. I think that's it with the design and now let's take a look at the options available to see what's new and what's still missing. There is a new reset button at the top right corner in case you messed up things which is nice. The clock designs are not just limited to the top quarter of the screen like we got used to from other operating systems but some of them can cover most of the lock screen real estate to show you more info like the weather and date. There is another button for adjusting the clock color and size. Google didn't show us how it works, but at least we know it's coming. Then we have the color picker, which is straightforward, but Google dropped the wallpaper and basic colors categories we have in Android 13. And now it only shows five wallpaper colors and a more button. At this stage, I'm not sure if tapping the ellipses will expand the card to show the same old categories or it will work in a different way, so let's wait and see. The quick wallpaper picker is similar to the one we have in the home screen overlay menu of Android 13, but with a button for more wallpapers. Then the new shortcuts menu to choose different options instead of only sticking to Google Wallet and the home controls like what we have now. But Google didn't show if it will allow us to pick from the list of apps installed on the device like what we have in One UI, or it will only be limited to the system options, but either way, it's still a nice to have feature. Finally, we got two new options, a quick toggle for showing or hiding notifications on the lock screen and another item for the rest of the options. I assume that the latter will simply take you to the lock screen settings page under the system settings. Overall, the changes coming to the lock screen are good when compared to Android 13, but there are some missing features that I wish Google added. First, the inability to create a lock screen gallery. So far, iOS is the only operating system I'm aware of that offers this functionality. Secondly, there is no lock screen widgets like One UI or iOS. Third, there is no linking between your lock screen and Do Not Disturb, also known as Focus. It's not even clear if Google will update Do Not Disturb to give you different modes to choose from to match Apple and Samsung, or it will just remain the same. We shouldn't lose hope as we have Android's quarterly feature drops that might push these missing features to Google phones in the future. Now let's move on to the last chapter, which is the wallpapers. Starting with the most exciting feature, the generative AI wallpapers, and this is the first time to see it in any operating system. First, you need to choose your wallpaper style, and the options shown in the demo are classic art, soft focus, collage, and mystical botanicals, and it seems like we have even more. It will allow you to build the structure prompts using a set of predefined words and the AI will generate different variants based on these words. It's a very smart idea in my opinion and it will challenge the current third-party wallpaper apps. So do you think generative AI wallpapers will be a good replacement for the current wallpaper apps we have or you will keep using them anyways? So please let me know in the comments what do you think. The second most exciting feature is the cinematic wallpapers. It will allow you to pick any of your photos, then it will apply its magic to separate the subject from the background to give you a nice parallax effect when you tilt the device. But is it going to overlay the subject over the lock screen clock like in iOS 16? Google didn't mention anything about this, and I don't think it will happen at least for now. But what I like is the ability to use this feature on both the home screen and lock screen, not only one of them. The last change in this category is the emoji wallpapers. I created a video showing you an early access for this feature. 
It didn't change that much since then, but now it looks more refined with more options, and when you set the wallpaper, it would respond to your touches. So that's what Google showed us when it comes to Material U and the styling options coming to Android. But I'm sure there will be a lot more differences when we get our hands on these features, which you will definitely know about in my upcoming videos. Overall, I'm very excited about these changes, and I think Google is heading towards the right direction in this matter. So I will be waiting for your comments to know what do you think. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and see you the next video.